Hey guys, so I would like to talk a bit about uh, networking and infrastructure. And I've worked in an IT position for almost three years now, uh, part-time while I've been going to school. And uh, today I had a meeting with some of the infrastructure engineers at my company and uh, I learned a lot. And I think it's really cool stuff that I had no idea about even though I worked in IT. Um, and so the question to ask is like, why should anyone care about this stuff? And that's what I asked them. And um, essentially at the heart of information technology is information and specifically how do we transfer that information between uh, computers on a network or between individuals uh, in a society. And so uh, at its essence, it's all about how do we manage the flow of information between nodes or points? And the analogy that uh, I keep coming back to is an apartment complex. And uh, the reason I like it is because um, it, it makes a lot of sense to me to think in terms of this analogy rather than the uh, actual terms because I can get pretty lost in that. So the way I think of it is Let's say we have an apartment complex and we have some kind of person and this person will have some social security number and uh, when they're in the apartment complex, they can go to any room. And for the sake of this example, we'll say that you can only have one person per room. And so this here is essentially your internal network. And inside the internal network, uh, you'll have people, um, and each one of these people uh, may or may not be in a room. And so uh, essentially what we have is we can think of each person as kind of a MAC address. And the MAC address is what is unique to the individual. It will never change, and no two individuals will have the same MAC address. And so when an individual comes into your apartment complex, they need to be assigned to a room. And uh, a DHCP server is what assigns a person to a room inside of our apartment complex. And uh, after the DHCP server has assigned uh, a MAC address to a room, uh, we think of the room as, or the question to ask is how do we identify this room? And so um, the industry standard for the past six decades has been something referred to as uh, TCP IP. And it's a way of identifying names. Um, specifically, we use IPv4 and IPv6 uh, nomenclature or syntax. And so um, you're probably pretty familiar with IP addresses uh, if you've been on the internet for any amount of time. Um, but essentially it's a series of four octets. So these uh, data sets like xxx.xx.xx.xx. Um, and so what these IPv4 addresses correspond to are individual rooms within uh, your network or your apartment complex. And so uh, in this case, what happens is we can um, start defining um, levels in our apartment complex. So uh, we could let like one level one be subnet one or something. You can call these names, whatever you want. Um, and then so we, we will begin to define subnets to help organize our internal network. Um, and it's purely for uh, our own purposes of being able to uh, make sense of all the chaos that's occurring because uh, in theory, because each octet can uh, it can exist a number from uh, 254 to 1, so you have 255 um, to the fourth uh, possible uh, internal IP addresses within your network. And so organizing them using these subnets gets very important. And uh, so that is the purpose of these subnets. And what uh, happens next is uh, we need to manage these subnets somehow um, to allow for communication with the outside world. And so what happens next is we um, will use uh, switches. And so switches are 
one of the most commonly uh, managed uh, things that network infrastructure will use. And so these switches, one switch is assigned to one subnet. Um, and so uh, based on the switch uh, and the subnet, the router will um, be able to control priority because if we have 255 to the fourth number of uh, machines on our network, um, managing the traffic is gonna be very difficult, but we need to have protocols in place to make sure it happens um, in some orderly fashion. So the router controls the traffic. And so the way I think of it is, every single individual in our little apartment complex wants to send and receive letters, packets of data. And um, so what happens is from the individual, from one PC, for instance, uh, you will want to visit youtube.com. You will send a packet, a request packet to the switch. The switch will give it to the router. And because the switch had a subnet mask assigned to it, um, the router will prioritize it accordingly because um, other people want to will want to be accessing other stuff and you'll have inbound packets of data um, meant for other people who were downloading things. And so the router has to uh, give a, a certain amount of time uh, to everybody uh, on the uh, actual um, line itself to communicate with the external world because this entire apartment complex um, exists on just one line. It has one line to the external world, the World Wide Web. Um, and so the router is kind of the kingpin here in terms of managing the flow of all of this stuff. And um, so that's a, a way of looking at it. And so um, another kind of analogy you can begin to draw here is if we had individuals who uh, who sent very critical or time sensitive documents, for instance, in our apartment complex, um, they're going to need to, need to receive priority over people who um, just send cat pictures or something. And so with our router, we could tell it that um, the executives, for instance, um, need to have priority uh, in all of the all of the activities, so the inbound and the outbound packets, and so that's the routers where we will actually do that kind of stuff. Um, and then, in addition to that, um, we will uh, need to defend ourselves against things such as DDoS attacks, denial of service attacks, um, and that happens when because we are um, connecting to the World Wide Web via just one line, um, people can physically saturate that line with garbage. And so um, if you've lived in a house, you'll know that you get junk mail. Um, and essentially a DDoS attack is just shoving your mailbox full of junk mail to the point that um, any valid email that you want to actually look at, like a bill you gotta pay, um, will eventually make it through, but um, it'll take such a long time that uh, by the time it reaches you, um, it might time out or uh, it, you, you just never receive it. And so um, what we do is we can turn to um, like the Better Business Bureau in the real world to, um, to go after the uh, people who will send the junk mail. Um, but we can also go to the post office, which would probably be a better example, and just say, I do not, not want to receive any letters from this person. Um, and uh, if there were outbound rules, you could also say like, I never want to send letters to this person. And so um, that's handled by the firewall. And um, the firewall or the firewalls that we use in practice today um, can get a bit more technical in that they can actually begin to screen the actual information. So if you sent, uh, or if there was an incoming letter uh, to you that had anthrax in it, the firewall could be able to detect the anthrax and uh, quarantine it or drop the packet and blacklist the, the sender accordingly. So with the really fancy firewalls, uh, as of today, we can um, begin to define conditions and rules to uh, begin to um, 
defend ourselves uh, from the outside world because it is a dangerous place. And so, um, yeah, I think uh, this kind of is just a very high level uh, generic and um, view of what computer networking is and um, why it is so important because at the end of the day, we're trying to allow people to share data with each other. And um, the main takeaway here though, is that we live in a world today where people are generating knowledge so quickly. And um, part of the reason for that is because we're able to share and communicate so easily. And it's because of computer networking that any of this is even possible. And so um, going into the future and figuring out ways that we can improve this process and make it more safe and robust and higher performance um, is very interesting stuff to think about. Um, and hopefully someone finds this interesting, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions and thanks for watching.